All right, welcome back to my channel. Here is the long awaited video of how much did it cost me to get my tiny house campground up and running. I know everybody has been really interested in this video. I have too, uh, don't judge me. I did some things that I had to do in order to afford to do this. Um, so I do have my book, I wrote down everything. I also have my computer with all the invoices and since I paid for things as I got done and not in advance, you know, they're all kind of not in order, but I did the best that I could. So as you guys should know, if you follow my journey, we invested $310,000 in a loan for a cabin with three acres that came with a second plot of land that was already ready to have a house put on it. Unfortunately, the seller lied about some of the things on that land and we didn't do our due diligence about that land and the well had ended up being um, contaminated and the septic tank was sunken and broke. We didn't do our due diligence, which we could have gotten so much more money off of the land because of that. But you know, you live and you learn when you're doing property investments. So we did a total of 310,000 for that land, for that home loan that came with the extra land, which means that we are not paying a separate bill, land loan or anything to have the tiny house up where it is right now. And I did a $40,000 down payment on that land. So we could totally add that into the total if you guys want to. Now, when you get a land loan, you're not gonna be paying $310,000 for some land unless it's like, I don't know, I've barely seen land like that unless there's like 10 septic tanks up there or something. Now the first few charges are, they do not have anything connected to it because we were playing, we were paying through PayPal. So we couldn't, I didn't have an invoice attached to that. We started the um, demolition, I guess, in January, January 18th. And I had $3,490. $749, $637, and $1,300 was charged to my PayPal account. And this kind of included the beginning stages of getting the land correct. So I'm definitely gonna show you guys how the land looked. It was trashy, it was a junkyard. We had to, we had a lot of things that happened where the guy who did live on the land didn't remove all of his stuff from the land. So all of those four uh, invoices was like gravel, um, getting the dirt out of the way, um, trash pickup, moving the tiny house, equipment, equipment rentals, because we had to rent a skid steer, we had to rent, you know, a lot of heavy machinery to get that land leveled, and also electricity pull as well. So all of that kind of combined with the first few stages. Also, I'm gonna try to stay in order so that we can know what we're, what's going on here. Also on the land, we needed another gravel truck. We also had to rent the truck as well. And that total was $685.52. Then the, the whole entire land was just trashed, you guys. So trashed that I had to get, I had to rent another dumpster. Um, I had to get a ditch uh, built because the water was just sliding off and just puddling up on the driveway. It was puddling up on the flat land because the guy who lived there never took care of the land. So we had to build another ditch to try to get the, the water to flow a certain way to not flood us out anymore. Um, we had to pay people to get trash picked up. And of course I just said level. That was a total of $1,546. So a lot of these totals don't call, don't like sound like a lot of money, but by the end I was poor. <laughs> so yeah, um, more land pick, more land pick up trash, more leveling, more gravel. We had to keep doing gravel, gravel, gravel because um, every time we would have a big machine come through, it would mess up the gravel. So we were just adding more and more and more so that nobody would have troubles getting onto my land. Uh, like you could drive a Prius up my long, steep driveway. That's how good we have placed the, the gravel there. I also want to shed on the land because we were we wanted the cleaners to have stuff that they can store. We needed to store the pine shavings for the toilet because you guys know I have a compostable toilet. I will talk about that more in the cost of the tiny house and the shed, the labor for the shed, 
painting of the shed. Um, I also got charged for fuel for the con contractors. That was a total of $1,695. The shed was originally gray. I wanted it to be black to match the tiny house because it just stood out. And I'll show you guys pictures. My contractor tried to get me to keep it gray. And I was like, no, it needs to be black. It needs to blend in with what's going on there. So the labor for building a shed was $350. We could have probably did it ourselves, but we're inexperienced and I had to go home. I could not be there for the shed build and we had renters coming in three days after the shed was being built. So I just couldn't do it. I had to hire my contractor to do it. Um, and the paint, the labor paint Painting the shed was also in there for $250. That is a total of $1,695. I just wanted to break down what was in those totals. Then I had to have more people come pick up the trash. I picked up trash, but they're just so tiny. This guy, he never went to a dumpster to throw away his trash. He literally used his land as a junkyard. I wish I had footage of what it looked like the day that we went to go see the property because we were like, there's no way they're selling this property. Like this, there's no way some, someone is selling this property because it was a mess. And I had to pay $385.19 for the final pickup of trash. Um, and that included the crew being $270. And then I bought lunch and drinks for the crew. And that was that came out to $83.19. Also, I'm not gonna always put in that I paid for fuel for my contractor or that there was a credit card fee as well in some of these totals. I'm just doing like the big, big, big breakdown of those big numbers. We'll move on to the well, cause that is a part of the land. So we'll move on to the, to the well. The first total I had was $1,860. As I told you, the well was contaminated. It's also not deep enough. The people who bought the land and who's been living on the land, they only dug about 100 feet. And when you're in the mountains of where I'm at, digging 100 feet or 150 feet, you're gonna have a sulfuric smell coming out of your water. It stinks. It gets contaminated really easily. We had the well people put in a, a pump. We had an extra tank and then we had to repair the well. So that was the total of $1,860. And then we had another total of $2,345 um, to get a 111 gallon pressure tank because I didn't want we, we, had a, we have a hot tub on the land and I didn't want my cleaners to be spending all day there trying to fill up the hot tub. So I opted to have a bigger tank, above ground tank, and that's 111 gallons. And then we had a $950 charge for the well because I needed more water to be able to be pumped out quickly. So I got an extra 52 gallon tank. That was actually $460 for that. The materials like piping and all of that was an extra $90 and then I was charged an installation fee of $350 and that is what includes the $950. So the well was expensive, but mind you, it is way more expensive to have a well dug than it is for me to repair the well. So I was fine with these charges. It sucked that the, that the well was contaminated to begin with and the seller was a crappy seller and lied about everything, but it is what it is. I lived and I learned I should have did due diligence and had an inspector go and inspect the, the septic tank and the well before we bought it. From there, let's go over the electricity. So the original total that I told you guys, the first four that were from PayPal, one of them was for the, um, was for the, the pole and the inspection of the pole from the city. I think it was like the $749 one for the poll. I could be lying. Um, mind you, this was all back in January and February. I had conduit, a junction box, electric plugs, wires, installation fee, and that was like a total of $516.57. And then I had another $250 charge for electric because I needed an extra breaker, breaker box, GFI plug, and lights installed. So the electricity probably cost me almost over $2,000 just for that stuff. Uh, surprisingly, electricity was way cheaper than everything else because we already had a pole up there. We just, we already had an electricity that could be run to the property. We just needed a pole um, to put the, the junction box up there. So that's really cool. Let's get on to the deck. So you guys saw that I um, helped build a deck. Um, so the deck was, $2,923.75 and that was for the lumber, the materials, and the paint. The roof itself, us building the roof, was $1,210. Um, that was for like deck boards, 
for the wheels as well. Like we wanted to hide the wheels. That was an extra $270 in that cost. The installation fee was $291 or $251. We wanted an extra frame so that we can put some swings up for you guys. I only have pictures of the swings. I couldn't be there during the installation to get video of it, but that was $685. Then the hot tub was $5,329.50. And total right here just for us to get the land ready for the tiny house. Now the tiny house itself costs $38,264.39. And if you've been following my journey, and I know it's probably hard to remember because I started this journey so long ago, I was quoted $33,000 $33, for the tiny house to be built. The reason why it, it ended up being an extra $5,000 is because I wanted an extra big window. Um, and I guess the window ended up costing more than what they quoted. And then I wanted them to go shopping for my furniture, all of the kitchen utensils. I wanted them to get the TV, so it was an extra. And then I also paid them for their time and them driving out there because they don't live near an Ikea, the people who built my thing. So they had to drive like almost two to three hours to get to go shopping for all of this stuff. So they added that into the total. So it was like an extra $5,000 on top of what I was originally quoted, which I was fine because I trust the way that she decorates. She gets my style, she is my style, so yeah that brings us to a grand total of all of the land the electricity all of this at 30 right here <laughs> i didn't even add it all up yet but it's right here so how was i able to afford all of this as you guys know you follow my journey right and every single dollar that i got from youtube from teaching from my time teaching esl from um, my planner sales, from my loan signing agent stuff, from my YouTube channel, every single side hustle that I had done, I saved up everything. I barely used any of my money on myself. Like I probably got my nails done. I only recently started getting my hair done and I might get rid of that because right now I am strapped for cash. But I just hustled every single day side hustle after side hustle and that's what my channel is about is showing you guys other side hustles that you can do for extra money now am i saying that the money is going to magically appear the next day that you open your side hustle no but eventually when that money does come in you have to be very eager with saving and i saved everything i never touched any of my youtube checks they went straight into my savings account until i had enough money to put into this business now and y'all, I was working. I worked every single day, no vacations. And if I did go on vacation, I had my computer with me and I was sitting there working, constantly talking to people, constantly trying to make sure I could make some more money. The tiny house was spent with cash. And I, I it was almost two years ago. Um, it was a combination of the ESL, vending, online sales, um, what is it um day trading i learned how to day trade so that i can make some money and that was cash and a lot of rich people say you shouldn't use cash whatever was left over went into the first few checks of the tiny house land and the last few checks of the tiny house land um, in between, I was taking profits out of our Airbnbs, and then at the end of it, I had to take out a 25K credit card for our business because I literally didn't have any money left over and I wanted to see this thing through before summer came because with all of the research that I did for my tiny house community, I knew, I knew without a shadow of doubt that I was gonna be making at least $10,000 a month through the summer months. and because I knew my projections very well, because I did the research, because I saw how well we did with our first rental, I was fine throwing all of my money into it, living within my means so that I could fund just this project. And that's why I was okay with getting the 25K credit card out. And do I recommend people do it how I did? Only if you know the research, you know what you're getting into, you without a shadow of a doubt you know for a fact you will immediately start making money yes i do recommend it but if you're scared if you didn't do your research as, as deeply as you think you could have um if you haven't seen a proven method in it then i probably wouldn't say you know completely drain your account and stuff like i did but i did have to take out a 25k credit card and although i'm kind of scared about 
uh, what's the word? I'm, I'm not comfortable right now. <laughs> Let me be honest. I am not comfortable right now, but seeing that the money is coming in every single day from the Airbnb and that I am able to make those three um, mortgage payments, I am, I am being a little bit more comfortable. So if you guys want to take my mentorship of me pushing you guys into finally going after your dream, how to set up your business, help you discover side hustles, then you guys can um, go to my website right here. I'll put my little picture here and let's jazz it up too is my website where you can have me as your mentor. Let me know. And I hope this video is a wrap. I hope I I'm not missing anything and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.